highly significant moment. If you, I mean, even if you haven't been keeping up with my channel lately, I find myself in a Carrera GT. Um, so that in itself is a very significant moment. However, if you have been following my channel lately, uh, you'll know that, um, well, the internet has been blasting me <laughs> to uh, get one ever, ever since uh, our trip down to the south of France when uh, Sam kindly announced it to the world that uh, this is on the radar as potentially the next car, or at least one of the next cars. So first of all, before I turn a wheel, before I even turn this thing on, I gotta say a massive thank you to Dean at Redline Cars. These guys are up near Harrogate. It's not every day that someone says, come and drive our Carrera GT. Also, they've got some fabulous stock, so genuinely just come and check these guys out. Really friendly, super helpful. Anyway, it is time. Right, it's pure, pure, pure. Also, the key with a Carrera GT, because these carbon clutches, super lightweight, tiny clutch, you actually set off with no throttle at all, which is, which is a bit counterproductive to conventional cars, but that's the way you do it. straight away because well because I'm in a Carrera GT <laughs> what on earth I straight away you have I mean what's going through my mind right now is the the legend that precedes this car is both incredibly special but also pretty notorious too it's just one of those cars that demands respect so yesterday, all I could do was look at the weather to see how it might turn out for this drive because of course, one of the fantastic features of the Carrera GT is that it is also a Targa. You can take the roof off. I turned up to Redline, I was like, Dean, let's take the roof off before we even get going. Just, uh, I mean, right now you guys also know that I'm on the hunt for a convertible of sorts. It might be that this thing just doubles as it. I always find that when you take the roof off a car, it gives you that next level connection with not only the car but your surroundings and the sounds the nature the smells so that for me is a big tick towards this car that the roof comes off now for those of you who might not be too familiar with this car and why it is incredibly significant i sort of feel obliged to tell you why this car is so fabulous and why the chances are we're never going to see a car like this again this goes all the way back actually in uh, i think it was around 1992 yeah that far back porsche were actually commissioned to develop a formula one engine yeah you see where i'm going with this the v10 engine in the carrera gt originally started out its foundation as a formula one engine right now that actually didn't really happen very soon after porsche were entering Le Mans and they then took the foundation back off the shelf and developed this glorious V10 engine. They were going to put it in the LMP1 prototype Le Mans car. I mean, the significance of that story alone is just phenomenal. This block is a thoroughbred V10 Porsche race car engine through and through. It was never ever intended to end up in a road car. Okay? So you've got this fabulous Le Mans engine developed by one of the world's best car manufacturers and at the time best race cars in the world. And then the FIA changed the rules on the series that this engine was ultimately going to form part of, which left them with one of the most fabulous engines that mankind has ever known with no car available for it to go into. So what did Porsche do? They thought, I tell you what, why don't we take this engine that was going to be in the Le Mans car let's put it in a car that will sell to the public <laughs>
I'm not going to take any liberties with this car. It's not my car. It's not a press car. This is dealership stuff. Someone has very kindly trusted me with the keys. I don't need to go over this, the uh, notorious stories of this car, but let's just say people don't always come out in the best of conditions when these things decide to bite back. So today I'm going to respect it, take my time and just listen to this engine without well, thrashing it too much. The immediate thing with this is just how light this car is. It's it's so pointy and direct. This car, this is a 2003 model. They built these cars from 2002 all up through about 2006. They made around 1,300 cars. This one is car number 282. You've got the moniker right there in front of you. But just, it's effortless waft. It's so light. So this is a full carbon tub. If you're familiar with the interior of a 918, either by being in one or by pictures, you can very much see the inspiration of the design of that car coming straight from the DNA of this. Even the sculpture of the carbon between the seats here, this beautiful bridge, it's all very much the DNA of what has formed their next hypercar. Of course, that's what this is. I think when this car launched, the hypercar bracket didn't really exist on it, wasn't a thing. But now we've got the likes of La, Ferraris, 918s, P1s. The, the access to performance these days is, is frankly ludicrous. When this launched, this was very much the, the hypercar of its day. It launched at a very similar time to the Ferrari Enzo. What I'm about to say is probably quite a controversial statement, but I'd go for one of these over an Enzo every single day. The main reason behind that is that, the gearbox. Just, it's Porsche renowned for being one of the most fabulous manufacturers of gearboxes, particularly the way that they implement them and integrate them into cars. This gearbox is nigh on 14 years old. It's mated to a V10 Le Mans engine was sat in a carbon fiber tub with the roof off and I can practice heel and toe in one of the most glorious creations to come out of Germany. It's, just listen to that. Out of this planet. Listen to this. The flywheel on this must be so small. As soon as you depress the clutch, the revs fall off, they just drop off. But that's exactly what this thing is about. It's all about being the driver. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I love today's modern twin clutch technology. It's phenomenal. And as a access to daily performance, you just generally can't beat it. But I recently stepped out of the McLaren 720S. If you've watched that review, you'll know that the performance of that bent my internal organs. The diaphragm will compress against the seat. This is 14 year old tech and that immediate performance, it's not on tap. It's not regularly on tap as it would be in a car like that. But I also said it's equally not the car that you're gonna bring out on a sunny weekend to set your ass on fire. This thing, oh God. <laughs> to sound like the sort of generic old school journalist, but this is man and machine at its finest. Ah, good Lord, you can pedal this all day long. I think the legend that has surrounded this is preceding it more than ever. I mean, I'm gonna say it, this is the car that Paul Walker died in. This is the car that a friend of mine went in to have his gear knob refurbished and the guy that had fitted it, took it out for a test drive and shakedown and wrote it off. It put him in the bush because he wasn't concentrating enough. I know friends who have had these things and they talk to me like it's a split personality. Like if you don't treat it with respect, it might literally kill you. But I'm super happy to say that while I feel undertones of that when I get up the revs, I'm in driving this you know, fairly chilled, being able to talk to you 
fairly perfectly normal dialogue and enjoy what is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most significant pieces of automotive history. <laughs>